All right. Um, you know, there is a, there's always, when someone's new to the instrument, uh, there is always this conundrum of, well, how do I take care of it? Especially from parent, how do I take care of it? Because they are, are, are concerned that the instrument's going to, to function and last uh, as long as possible. And they know that their youngster may not take the best care of stuff, especially when you have, you know, uh, middle school boys <laughs> playing the instrument. It may, uh, you know, based on the cleanliness of their rooms, may not be as clean as you'd like them to be sometimes. Um, so, here, here we have um, a alto saxophone care kit. Now, you can get these from your local music store. The store that I teach at is right here. So you can always, if you're in the Tampa Bay area, you can get them here at Music Showcase. And there's a phone number and the... Um, uh, the web address and they actually get them from that company American Way Marketing and they have our name on them so there you go and we're gonna open up this kit and show you and show you what's in it here we have a, a list that's written in microdot of the things that are in the quit that are in the kit some swabs um, for saxophones and, and they make all sorts of kits uh, for flutes and trumpets and, and the like, some court grease and that kind of stuff. There's kind of a list of what you might find in some of the kits and some instructions on, 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 on how to use them, what to use them on, what not to use them on. This is on the other side. Same kind of thing. Some, some important thing about keeping them clean. There's some about trumpets and trombones and clarinets. The saxophone. Your saxophone is heavier and more awkward to handle when it's not secured by the strap. There you go. Use a strap whenever possible to avoid dropping your instrument. The saxophone should never be handled or carried by the neck of the instrument. Consult your teacher, me, um, on the exact instructions on assembling the neck of the saxophone and the body. Avoid oils and other foreign materials on the pad. So it gives you some general some very general rules about how you're going to um, handle the saxophone, and I think that parents can, you know, can benefit by that, you know, that level of instruction. Don't grab it by the neck, and if you see uh, somebody grabbing it by and holding it by the neck, it's it's, it's going to be very bad. It's not going to work out very well. Okay, let's dig let's dig more into the kit. Oh, well, this doesn't have anything to do with keeping the instrument clean. This is a very good thing. This is a practice record, uh, sort of a practice sheet. So you can put your name there, um, your first week, and how many minutes a week you practice. And that sort of shows the parent, I, I think, or whoever paying for the thing, the uh, the student's level of interest. Or if it's for an adult, it might just, it might also show your level of interest over time. The numbers at the, at the top may be big when you start. And as you move down week after week after week, do they get do the numbers get bigger or they get smaller? So this is kind of cool that this is in here. That's 26 weeks, and that's another 26 weeks uh, for the end of the year. So it's a great way to track your interest. All right, we have um, a cloth here in inside a um, nice plastic bag, and it's for it says right on it. Is for lacquered instruments. Now, most of our instruments are going to be lacquered. Um, there are some saxophones and trumpets that you can buy that don't have lacquer on them, and they and they look really, really old. Um, but most of our instruments have that shiny covering on it. This thing that makes it shiny is a lacquer. There's a bit. There's a bit of brass, of course, the instrument's made of, and then there is. A bit, uh, a very bit of a small bit of gold paint normally, or even silver paint, and then that shiny stuff is lacquer. And this, if you wipe it off, it gets the fingerprints off. Our our fingerprints often have will have oil on you know oil in our fingers or whatever, and um, this will help keep that lacquer nice and shiny. So you're going to it shiny for a very long time, hopefully. This next thing is called a swab. S-W-A-B swab in a little plastic bag and has a 
a cord with a little weight on it. So we're going to get it out of there and show you what it looks like um, outside the package. It has this yellow stuff here, which is like a chamois. And, and, and for those of you who know what that is, is for drying things out. It is extremely important that the, that the inside, the interior of the instrument stays as dry as possible. Now, we, all, we often, you know, think that there's a lot of spit in there or whatever, but there's not really much spit in there. Most of it's condensation from, from, our, you know, from the warmth of our breath um, uh, against the cold metal of the saxophone. Now, we have this thing, which is like a little foam rubber here that's part, partly scrubber. And then we have a long piece of string here and a weight on the end. You see that weight on the end? How this works is you drop this into the top of the instrument, it spills out of the bell, and you pull it through the instrument this way. So the chamois, the chamois here, is making contact with the interior of the instrument. Make sure when you pull it that you don't pull too hard and break the string and you pull it through the instrument, and that way it, um, any, you pull it, and I like to pull it down, because then you're pulling, you're getting less resistance as you're pulling, not more. You're less likely to break the string, and anything that you need to get out of the instrument, you're pulling it away from your face, not toward your face, not toward the neck. There you go. And that's the swab. Uh, now, if you are keeping your instrument on a on stand, like I keep mine, and I'll show you mine here in a little bit, uh, and it air dries, as long as there's no pets or small children to knock it over, that's really every bit as good as swabbing it out. Because it's what the most important thing is to make sure that it stays as dry as possible and gets dry as quickly as possible. If I have to put it in a case and leave right away, then I'll swab it out. If it's just going to be sitting out, um, then I'll let it air dry. This is a swab for the saxophone neck. Again, it's made out of the same sort of chamois material, very absorbent, and it has a, has a string and a weight. And you push it in towards, um, this goes where the cork goes, on the inside and out the bottom of the, um, out of the neck. Now the neck is detached from the instrument while you're doing that. And then you pull it through, again, with the same thing. Pulling anything wet and, and, and any nasty stuff that's in the neck away from your face. And down and, th and, down and through. Works exactly the same way. I am a big proponent of these. This right here is a reed guard. A reed slides right here, the tip underneath this little guard here, and protects the reed. And this keeps the reed bottom nice and flat, and the reed tip from warping. You can put one on one side and one on the other, because, you know, normally you'll have you'll be running two reads at the same time, right? You'll have an A read for Monday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, excuse me, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then a third, and then a Tuesday, Thursday read. That way you always have a good read, right? And you'll keep your reads in here and not, and do not store them on the mouthpiece. You put them in a reed guard, and this kit has a reed guard. Cool. Why don't they put quart grease in the cases anymore when they sell an instrument? Well, because people were using too much of it. You need very little quart grease. This goes on the, uh, on the saxophone on only one place, on the major cork on the neck. So you can easily slip the mouthpiece on. Uh, my... My pro tip is to, when you get a new instrument or a new cork, is you put some on the cork and you rub it in for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, making sure that you're compressing the cork and getting the grease itself 
that I'm not going to open this, but it looks like lip balm. It is not lip balm. Do not use it as lip balm. It is not lip balm. Do not use it as lip balm. Um, getting this in, you know, in, in sort of in the cork, you just rub it, kind of rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. And, you know, you know, while you're watching TV or doing something else. And then you'll be able to easily slide the mouthpiece on the onto the instrument. There's a website of Super Slick. Super Slick all, uh, makes all sorts of oils for like, uh, or, you know, for trombone and trumpet and the like, valve oil, slide oil, and... Um, now they make cork grease. There you go. This mouthpiece brush. Now, the thing is about this particular mouthpiece brush that comes with these, um, there is, and, you, and it's really hard to see, right there, there's a little rubber rubber nipple on that. You want to make sure that that doesn't come off because if not, you have bare metal sticking through. And you use this to sort of clean out your mouthpiece and do that occasionally because what will happen is that you will get calcium deposits. Well, where does calcium come from? It comes from your mouth. It comes from your saliva. You'll get calcium deposits inside there and it'll just, it, it, it looks gross and it can, if buildup is too much, uh, mess with the dynamics, the aerodynamics of your mouthpiece. So you want to make sure you want to, as much as possible, that you clean out your mouthpiece. Now, do not use hot water. Do not use hot water, and do not put it in the microwave. I know it seems like putting putting your 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 mouthpiece in the microwave, even for a even for the briefest seconds, will kill all the germs. But what it'll do more than anything is kill your mouthpiece. Do not boil your mouthpiece, and it's because of the very same problem. Use cold water. Cold water is fine. A soap, the same soap um, that they clean ducks with. Um, if it'll if it'll get crude oil off a duck, then that soap will get the nasties out of your mouthpiece. Think about it that way. And you use your brush and you and and make sure that you soap it up real good, um, and then wipe it out. Let it sit and dry. And this is a brush to help you with that process. This little bitty brush is if you're wiping down the instrument, da down in the nooks, back a little bit, down in the nooks and crannies of the instrument, there will sometimes be buildup of dirt and dust, and this will help you get down in there. Be very, very careful because of the same reason. There is no tip on this, and if you push this down in the nooks and crannies, it's pretty sharp right there it will scratch your instrument, so you have to be very, very careful. And this is just a little brush to keep you from, um, you know, as that buildup on your instrument shows up, you can just brush it away. There you are. Last thing. If you are in band, uh, or you are a professional musician, uh, one of the things that, that you've been asked to have at every rehearsal is one of these. It's a pencil. It's a pencil for writing notes and erasing mistakes. And it's in this kit. So it's a pretty good little kit. And this is how you would clean your saxophone. If there, if there are any, if there's any questions, if you have um, anything that you want to ask me about it, just write it in the comments and we'll go over it. Okay, as an addendum, a lot of people have these. These pads, these what they call a pad saver. It's like a big thing you stuff in your instrument. And it's supposed to get the water out. And you see how it goes from the top there? It fits there on the top. That's an alto one, and this is a this is one and the blue one is one for tenor. And they make them for like piccolo and clarinet and flute. I don't have a problem with them. I only have a problem with them if indeed you leave them in your instruments. 
because it, they get the water off the instrument, but what gets the water off of it if it's stuck in your instrument and in a dark place? Nothing. It's like leaving a wet rag in your instrument. If you use it, swab your instrument and set that thing to the set this thing to the side so it can dry and then wash it every now and again. I don't have any problem with it. But for, for those people who leave it in their instrument, that in my opinion, and again, all this is just my opinion, is a not is not a very good plan.